So Boris Johnson had quite a busy first day at office. Within hours of taking over the office from Prime Minister Theresa May, Boris Johnson carried out a massive cabinet clear-out. Eleven of Theresa May's senior ministers were sacked, while six others chose to walk out rather than serve under the new Prime Minister. This includes Johnson's main rival in the UK Prime Ministerial race, Jeremy Hunt. Announcing his departure, Jeremy Hunt said that he had been offered an alternative role, but he had turned it down. Defence Secretary Penny Mordaunt a leading Brexiteer also announced her departure. What's interesting to note is that about a quarter of Boris's cabinet are women. Eight out of the 31 positions have gone to women. Now, let's take a look at some of the major changes that he's made. Former Home Secretary Sajid Javid will replace Philip Hammond as Chancellor of the Exchequer. Remember, Philip Hammond had resigned as soon as Boris Johnson won the Prime Ministerial race. Preeti Patel, who was among the most vocal critics of Theresa May's Brexit plan, will take charge as the United Kingdom's Home Secretary. Patel is Britain's first Indian origin Home Secretary. Dominic Raab will replace Jeremy Hunt as the new Foreign Secretary. Raab, a former Brexit Secretary, ran for the Conservative leadership himself, but was knocked out early on in the race. Johnson's long-standing ally Ben Wallace will replace Penny Morton as the Defence Secretary. Jacob Rees-Mogg has been appointed Lord President of the Council and Leader of the House of Commons. This will be the Brexit supporters' first ever government role. Two other Indian origin ministers have also been elected into the cabinet. Junior Minister Alok Sharma has been promoted to the rank of a cabinet minister with the portfolio of international development. Johnson has also promoted Rishi Sunak, son-in-law of Infosys founder N.R. Narayana Murthy, to the role of Chief Secretary to the Treasury. And we have our correspondent, Oli Barat, joining us live from London. Oli, what a first day it has been uh, with uh, Boris Johnson in the hot seat. Uh, lots to talk about. Uh, we'll begin with the cabinet reshuffle, which has raised many an eyebrow. And then, of course, uh, talk to us about uh, him hitting on the two things that he's known for. One is Brexit and the other is immigration. Yeah, the reshuffle of the cabinet has been absolutely ruthless. I think a lot of people expected that when Boris Johnson finished the leadership campaign and came out victorious, that he would, as he said in that leadership campaign, try and unite the Conservative Party by creating a cabinet that really represented the breadth of talents and views uh, of the Conservative Party. Uh, that's not how this has turned out. He's been very ruthless in getting rid of uh, a raft of cabinet ministers from Theresa May's last cabinet, but at the same time he's also really very definitely surrounded himself in cabinet with loyal figures, the majority of whom backed him in the leadership campaign and all of whom now say that they will uh, commit to seeing that Brexit takes place by October the 31st. So this is a huge gamble, make no mistake, because it sends a number of disgruntled ministers to the back benches, but it also means that there are sections of the Conservative Party made up of uh, Remainer MPs who wanted Britain to stay in the European Union, who are really troubled by all of this and maybe now less inclined to back him if and when he gets a Brexit deal to Parliament. Talking about Brexit deal, I don't think Boris Johnson is even in interested in one at this point in time, uh, Ollie, because uh, at this point in time, he has made it very clear that he is preparing for a no-deal Brexit. Well, actually, he says he is very clear that he wants there to be a deal with the European Union, but you're quite right to say that he's also making it clear that Britain now needs to prepare much more for a no-deal scenario. One of the interesting uh, areas of tone that he's been striking in this first statement to the House of Commons as UK Prime Minister is the way that he said that the European Union would be very willing to come and talk to him at any time about some kind of uh, new deal and that he hoped there could be a new deal um, and he even set out what that kind of new deal might look like but what he is not saying is that he is going to suddenly go off and visit a raft of European capitals, head to Brussels, seek talks with the European Union and um, he's al almost saying you guys need to come to us and make us an offer. At the same time the 
the shape of the deal that he set out in this House of Commons statement looks like the kind of thing that the European Union and member states have said repeatedly they will not uh, countenance, they won't even uh, begin negotiations on the type of deal that he is setting out. So certainly he's setting out a pretty firm position, whether that's because he hopes to meet in the middle in the end or because he's uh, purposefully heading towards a no-deal Brexit is harder to define. Oli Barrett, our correspondent, joining us live from London with that update. Thank you, Oli, for being with us here on We On Dispatch.